Hey everybody, welcome back to Survival Prepping for Normal People. Today we're going to leave our thinking hats on and I'm going to leave my nerd glasses on because I'm going to talk about something that I think you really need to consider that I haven't seen a lot of references to or a lot of videos about and uh, I'll just jump right into it. It's my contention, my strong contention, and I could see this happening given some experiences I've had in my background from being a soldier to being former law enforcement that preppers will become outlaws after shit hits the fan I'm gonna tell you why a lot of people have this notion that they can't show their faces on YouTube because the government's gonna know they're a prepper well you know what the government and it was proven, if you haven't watched that Edward Snowden movie, and you don't know anything about that guy's story, if that didn't seal the deal for you, if you were a doubter of how the government could track your information, go back even further and watch that Will Smith movie, Enemy of the State. That movie came out in the 90s, and they had the scoop on what was going on. And it's true. Look up uh, Project Echelon, in case you... Uh, don't think they can check everything you do. And then you got these people talking about, oh, well, you know, eventually the government's going to implant us with a tracking device and track every move and, and pretty much know what we're thinking. They already got one on you. And you paid for it. Cost anywhere from five to $500 to $1,000. Yeah, you can take pictures with it. And you can call your wife from work with it. It's called your cell phone. You take it everywhere you go. It's the first thing you look at in the morning. It's the last thing you look at at night before you go to sleep. It's in your pocket, it's in your car, it's everywhere you go, and you pay for it yourself. And you don't think that these licensing agreements that these big companies have with the federal government that regulate the shit out of these people, you don't think they've agreed to let the government have access to all the information they could ever want as a condition of them doing business? So you think hiding your face is going to protect you from the federal government if they decide to crack down on you someday? <laughs> Keep dreaming. But anyway, a lot of people have that fear that the federal government's going to crack down on preppers somehow and they're going to send the 82nd Airborne Division to your town and they're going to surround the place and they're going to make you come out with your preps up. Well, I could see that being a remote possibility, but I think in a situation that was bad enough where the government felt like it needed your preps, that the Army and the rest of the military would be pretty busy elsewhere at that point. A lot of things would have to go wrong for the federal government to think it was in a position where it was desperate enough that it needed to come confiscate your food preps or your ammunition. Right? Think about it. Those resources are going to be much better allocated somewhere else. And the government, with all their budgets and all their funding and all their money and the people that matter, if you think that those guys aren't set up for a shit hit the fan scenario, think again. Where do you think that money goes? What that guy say in that movie ID4? You don't think they really pay $40,000 for a toilet seat and $20,000 for a hammer, do you? No, don't be a dumbass. They're taken care of. They don't need your MREs or your bag of tuna or your can of olives, whatever else you got stacked up. I don't think they're that concerned about the amount of ammunition that you have. Because everybody that they go and fight has ammo. It's not really a major concern. It's just part of the job, right? And it's just a job hazard. Send the military in somewhere, you expect to run into people that might have weapons and might have ammunition. And sometimes they even know how to use them. So I don't think those are as big a concern. So if you have this fantasy that somehow you're going to fight off the federal government, especially if you're a veteran, what are you thinking? Think back to the days when you were in the military. If you were a Marine or if you were in the Army, the Air Force, the Navy, whatever branch. Think back. If you were deployed anywhere, and you saw any kind of combat or you supported any kind of combat operations or anything like that, think back. When was the last time the U.S. military actually lost a battle? Keep thinking. It's been a long time. A long time. Now, has the United States lost wars? Well, that depends on how you define losing, and that depends on how you define war, right? But the people on the ground, the soldiers on the ground, the Marines on the ground, the guys behind the trigger, when was the last time they lost a battle? I don't know, man. you got to go way, way back to figure that out. 
Unless you're just some anti-military butthole and every time somebody gets a scratch you consider that a loss. But no, it's been a long time since the American military has actually physically lost a battle on the battlefield. So if you think that you and your little group of people, your bunch of little redneck militia guys or whatever you got, is going to fight off the federal government, you're wrong. Especially if you're a vet. You might say, well they trained me, I know how they think. Yeah, you know how they think. So think about it. If they're in a situation where they can't root you out, they're going to stand off and call in an airstrike. They're going to call in Apaches, man, with Hellfire missiles. They're going to call in F-16s dropping 500-pound bombs on your ass. If their goal is to eliminate you, and they're not there to arrest you, yeah, they're going to smoke you. Just like we do everybody else all around the world. Think about it. But that's not what I'm here to talk about today. I don't think that's the biggest threat you need to worry about. Now, the threat that I think you really need to worry about, you may be able to handle. If you do things correctly. If you set yourself up now. But I think it's a big threat. Probably the biggest threat to you and why you're going to become an outlaw after shit hits the fan. And you probably haven't really thought about it that much. Are you ready? Got your thinking caps on? Got my nerd glasses on. Let's go ahead and jump into this. I think the biggest threat to preppers after the shit hits the fan is going to be your local government. The city, the county, possibly the state. Depending on the situation and circumstances, how close you are to the state capital and whatnot. I think they may be your governmental enemy after shit hits the fan. Now, people watch Walking Dead, and they talk about that Negan guy and how he had that totalitarian government set up. Before it gets to that point, and if it lasts long enough, it will get to that point. But before it gets to that point, the biggest threat for you and your preparations and your stockpiles are going to be your local government. And I'm going to tell you why. In a situation that is so massive that chaos is breaking out everywhere, the federal government's going to have enough to do defending our borders and it, its interests overseas. It's not worried about Billy Bob and his 40 acres living on the side of the mountain back in the woods. It's not. Not unless Billy Bob is uh, somehow working with the enemy who wants to invade the country and he's out there setting up a landing zone for him or something. And they have intel to that effect. No, they're not, they're not worried about Billy Bob. But the local sheriff or the local police department or the the county commissioners or those people. After a few days, and when it finally sets in that there's no help coming from bigger government to come help out the little governments, they're going to start cracking down. Because at that point, those politicians aren't going to lose the chip on their shoulder. They're not going to take off their I'm in charge shoes and go home and leave you alone. It's just going to get worse. Who do you think did a worse job during Katrina, the mayor or the president? Mm hmm. Exactly. That mayor was out of control. That guy was out of control. And don't think that that wouldn't happen where you live. Now, if you live in a major city, the hordes of ravenous, starving looters are going to be a major threat initially. Absolutely. And they'll continue to be a threat, but they'll start to dwindle down after time. If you can outlast them. But your local government, they're going to make it against the law for you to have preps at all. They're going to call it hoarding. And they're going to say that due to the state of emergency, the hoarding of essential life-saving supplies, henceforth, will be illegal. All houses will be searched. And any extra superfluous or surplus supplies that anybody has on hand that they have hoarded will be confiscated and redistributed for the public good to help all the assholes who didn't prepare. But you know which assholes it's going to go to first? It's going to go to the city and the county government people and their families first because they didn't get ready. Because they were too busy glad-handing and going to barbecues and cook-offs and fairs and all the other bullshit they do to get elected to their little pissy ant, stupid government jobs. God. So they weren't thinking about that. 
Their life's been one big popularity contest since high school. Think about the people that get elected to those positions. Those positions don't pay crap. Unless they're corrupt. I mean, that happens. You know, they take kickbacks and whatnot, and they got their side deals going on. But they do it because they have that need to be accepted and feel loved by everybody because they didn't get the attention they needed when they were kids or whatever the hell. But those twisted, messed up buttholes are going to be the ones that after shit hits the fan are going to make it illegal for you to be who you are and they're going to come after your stuff to hand out to everybody that voted for them last November so that they can continue to be in charge and be big shots and take care of the people, their constituents, during a time of emergency. Aren't you glad you voted for Bob Butthole last year? Think about it. Be ready for that. Have a plan for that. I dare anybody to tell me that that's not more likely than the 82nd Airborne coming and surrounding your little town somewhere. Think about it. They're already there. They already know the area. And you can get all conspiratorial if you want to. I mean, I can get all like out there in the weeds. Why do you think they gave all these local police and sheriff's departments MRAPs and stuff? Hmm. I don't know why they gave them to them. But what do you think they would use them for? Because right behind that MRAP would be two or three flatbed pickup trucks ready to load up your shit and haul it off as soon as they bust the front of your house off and come in there and take your stuff. Be ready for that. I think that's going to be a much larger threat to you than the hordes walking 90 miles outside the city limits and finally finding their way to your house along the roadside out in farm country. Or the 82nd Airborne paratrooping, parachuting troops into, into your local football field to come take your stuff like that movie Red Dawn. Not the crappy one with the kid from Nickelodeon, but the good Red Dawn that came out back in the 80s. And Patrick Swayze was still cool right before he made that crappy dirty dancing movie. Anyway... Yeah, if you think paratroopers are going to come follow from the sky to come take your two boxes of MREs, might be a little out there, but the local sheriff and his reserve officers and all the people who uh, were too busy doing everything else in the world and didn't get ready, but all of a sudden they need your stuff, they're not even going to need to know who you are. You can be a secret prepper all you want. They're going to go door to door, and they're going to check that house from stem to stern, from top to bottom. I'm a former police officer. There are ways to search a home. And if you think you're going to hide something behind a mirror or a false door or a bottom of a fake drawer or whatever else it is, you, yeah, dude, if these people are hungry and they're determined and they're scared and they're not worried about any ramifications because there's not going to be any court system after shit hits the fan. If they don't declare a nationwide martial law, which they may, and if they do, Anybody who's in any type of law enforcement position, anybody that's in any kind of local governmental position is going to have even more authority than they got now. They're going to come take your stuff. Think about it. That's people you need to be more scared of than anybody else. Yeah, but I voted for you, Mr. Mayor. Well, mayor's not going to give a shit because they're going to pass some ordinance in an emergency meeting and it's going to be a unanimous decision that anybody who has extra supplies in their house is now a hoarder in a time of emergency. And you will become an outlaw. You'll be looked at just like you were a looter or a thief. And they're going to come get it. And if you're one guy in a family on a farm somewhere, and you think you're going to stand your ground against a well-armed posse who just might have an MRAP, it ain't going to happen. You need to have plans. You need to have contingency plans. You need to have backups to your plans. Like you need to have things stashed other places. Don't keep all of your eggs in one basket. When they show up, give them that extra case of pork and beans you got. And let them be on their merry way. Let them confiscate those two weapons you have in your house. Let them be on their merry way. Keep a low profile. Always strike when the time is right. Don't go looking for a fight. Be ready. Every which way you can. But I think the local government is going to be a bigger threat to you than you've ever considered. But why would they do that to me? I grew up with these people. I know these people. Have you ever been around people in an emergency situation? They lose their heads. And if you think these people aren't going to exploit you and what you have so that they can take care of themselves and their family because they weren't ready, then you're fooling yourself, dude. You're full of shit. 
And if you're some kind of vet and you think you're going to take on the United States military, <laughs> you should know better. You used to do that job. You know what it entails. But if it actually gets that serious and things are falling apart to that point, unless there's some kind of major revolution inside the country where there's armed resistance to the federal government and in the size and scope that it's actually a threat to the government, those resources are going to be used elsewhere. No. Local government, city and the county, that's people you need to keep your eyes on. Yeah, but I know Jim. Yeah, you know Jim right now while shit's good. He might be the greatest county commissioner ever. He might have put new trees in every park and made sure all the roads are paved and there's no potholes. And that he finally went down and uh, they fixed the sewage treatment plant and it doesn't smell anymore. And all the other great things that the county commissioners do and the city councils do and the mayors do and... All that stuff, cutting ribbons at, you know, daycare centers and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fat people get hungry before everybody else does. Take a look at your local officials. Most of them aren't going to be on the thin side. Be ready. If you like the channel, subscribe. If you don't like the channel, don't subscribe. If you like the video or the subject matter... Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if there's something you'd like to see me cover. Something you'd like to talk about. Maybe get my point of view on if I haven't done it so far. And share. Get the word out there. Thanks for watching guys. Stay safe out there.